All right, what's going on guys? It's November 1st and we're going out on a nature walk. I want to get some wildlife. I haven't been out too much recently. I've kind of given up on filming on the A6000 for now just because, well, this footage always looks very unstable and I'm sick of trying to stabilize it. Honestly, I just need the quick action of the iPhone to capture everything for me. I don't know, just easier. It's a little misty out today, a little damp out, kind of, uh, creating the best atmosphere right now for wildlife. This is awesome. There hasn't been a single soul out here on the trails. Well, I guess we'll be taking some photos of him. I would like to get a lower angle of uh, the great blue heron because last time I did some video work of this guy, it was a lot of top down. There he is. Make sure I got bird eye autofocus on. I do. Well, there's a nice reflection. I have auto ISO on just because honestly, I'm not really too worried about it. There's like a, a duck getting close to him and he doesn't like it. He might take off again. No, never mind. He's hunting now. Just make sure I do. Yep. So we are shooting on high. I'm just honestly like I'm being just doing one at a time rather than like that. I'm not taking burst shots. I'll hold hold down the uh, the shutter when action takes place, but. I usually just kind of control my shots and uh, that way I don't have a hundred billion to delete later. Oh, we got some, some duck fights happening. Which one's making all the noise? I'm gonna move a little bit closer. Be careful not to step into this ravine here. It's all corroded. Yeah, it's not a very interesting shot. If I got right down into the water, into the mush, I could get a low enough angle, but then there's nowhere to kind of like, you know, like right now I'm, I'm hidden behind this bush. So I'm avoiding disturbing the heron as much as possible. If I were to get down there, I'm most likely going to bother him a lot. You know what? I have one idea. We can go down to the edge of the bridge over there and then get a lower angle and put some scenery behind him. He's staring at me walking by. All right, that's a pretty cool scene actually. So I'll just come right down here and then just get a low angle. Where is he? There he is. How are these turning out? Oh, they look pretty good. So here's what I'm gonna do. Leave it on uh, auto ISO. And then just to avoid getting, having the highlights be too bright, I'm just gonna bring the compensation down to minus seven, maybe even minus one. We'll see how that looks. That's pretty good. I'll go a touch up. We'll do 0 0.7. And then I'm just gonna move over here through all this gunk and trash. Oh, he's, I, yeah, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, he's coming back this way. This could be interesting if he flies over us. There he is, I lost him for a second. All right, three, two, one, and let's get the first shots. Well, that wasn't ideal. I'm not sure. I think that might've been my fault that he left. An old favorite spot. Right there, get a photo of that. First fresh snowfall while there's still uh, water. Beautiful, I'll be back. I'm gonna put my camera on silent. You will see, but this is usually a good spot for birds. Oh, shoot. Come on, work, work. No. Why isn't it focusing? I 
Okay, that was super weird. I could not get that to focus for the life of me. I managed to pull it together though. Once it started focusing, it nailed it every single time. I'll get the app set up so that you guys can see what I'm seeing. You can see how the autofocus is performing. So remote shoot, connecting via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Join. Okay, we're connected. Whoa, nice catch. Swipe down and start recording. Holy, that bird just dive bombed me. Okay, I don't wanna miss these shots. I missed the shots because the touch screen was activated when I put it up to my nose, my nose clicked it there. So the focusing was on the left-hand side. So I was recentering my focus. We're gonna turn off touch screen functions because you're, uh, when you pull it up to your face, you can misclick a lot of things on the screen. Now this is a cool part of the woods to walk in. Oh, I might have myself a landscape, a landscape shot here. I really like this. Turn up the f-stop. Make sure everything's nice and sharp. One of those shots I'm sure will turn out cool. Ah, I like that one. So right there, that's a beaver dam. And this previous years has never had this much water. And when it does have a little bit of water, it's only been in the spring after a lot of snow melt but it typically drains right through here, underneath the main path and into the uh, river. So there's definitely some beavers here keeping this all nice and full, keeping that dam together. I'd love to see them. From my experience, uh, last year I got to photograph a lot of beavers and they were usually out closer to, the best bet was always dusk. The morning never worked out for me, so I would come out an hour before sunset and it's been an hour and a half or so with them just look at that that's an entire tree down this tree here the park clearly knows they've been cutting the branches off of it because it was on the main path but uh yep that's beavers it'd be a lot more difficult to get photos of these of these beavers because uh this entire area is like water and forest so i'd never see him well, when I come out to look for the beavers, I know exactly where to look. This spot right here has the very most chewed up trees. All these trees along the side here are all chewed up. All right, we're back out. I'm gonna attempt to find the beavers tonight. Honestly, the lighting looks amazing right now. I'm excited to hopefully find some wildlife. Now, chances are the beavers are actually gonna be down that way in the forest. From what I saw, there was a lot chewed up over there. It'll be interesting to see what other species I might find around here. So the last time I found beavers, it was really cool because they dammed up a part of the river. So that backed up a lot of fish and made a new body of water basically, like a new pond. So you would get the green heron, blue heron, minks, kingfishers, all kinds of animals benefited from that and they were all fishing up this pond. So I don't know what kind of animals may have come this way. This is usually just drainage for after winter or heavy rainfall, but the beavers have it all damped up. So the water has collected over the entire summer and now there's like a whole new ecosystem right here. Oh, what was that? Yep, so those photos kind of look like the Loch Ness Monster. Hardly can even tell I got anything. They're going by again. I think I found the dam now though. So it's gonna be way over on the other side. They're straight ahead. And just across to the right seems to be where the dam is. So that's cool. So you know what? I'm gonna to try to move in a little bit closer uh, this way. And it seems like they're going in and out of the wooded area. So I could find a spot to hide over there and maybe get some photos. There's old farmer's fence all through their pond. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there we go. You can kind of see it right there. 
metal fencing all through there. Okay, that's the perfect spot right down there. I forget what you call these, but they're like literally beaver slides for the beavers coming in and out of the water. Some freshly cut down trees. So if I wait around here, this could be my spot. giving it 20 more minutes and then I'm heading back. Um, so there's two of them for sure. One was off to my left chewing in behind the trees I couldn't see. And then that one just decided to have a bath in front of me, which was totally awesome. All right, I'm gonna take that as a win and go home and get some dinner. <laughs>